Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris. The Unbidden is here. These are invaders from another dimension and their ships surely do look the part. They look like ghost ships. Now, um, by your guys' advice, I have made a couple of changes. Um, first thing is, is I am uh, reconfiguring my fleets around. Um, I'm phasing out corvettes at this point of the game and I'm replacing their role with my um, torpedo cruisers. I'm also phasing out my gunship cruisers which had uh, medium weapons all over them. Um, I'm really just going to keep my cruisers to torpedo cruisers. They're going to have cru torpedoes and small weapons on them. These torpedoes are going to deal massive damage to big ships and their small weapons are going to be targeting small ships. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to have a bunch of battleships um, with large weapons on them and then we're going to have titans. Um, and then we're going to have a couple carriers in the fleet as well. Um, so if you want to see our new fleet design, um, we can see here, uh, we'll have 15, uh, sorry, 16 picket destroyers. I haven't gotten rid of the destroyers. They're fragile as well as corvettes, um, but we couldn't really get rid of the destroyers because nothing else does uh, PD quite as well as destroyers. They give us three PD slots for a uh, low uh, cost of alloys. So we will still have to be replenishing a lot of these destroyers. So we still are going to be spending a lot of alloys in replenishment for destroyers, but hopefully not so much with our other sturdier ships like cruisers which are going to be pretty tough. Um, so we can take a look at our um, torpedo class um, cruisers, which I have now equipped with disruptors, auto cannons, and ancient nano missile cloud launches. Um, so these will be able to target small ships as well as large ships with their torpedoes. These will be filling in the role that our corvettes used to fill. Um, and then our uh, carriers and kinetic artillery and, tidal, uh, and titan class ships are all going to be the same. You might notice that there's no energy artillery um, in our star fleets anymore. Um, I'm only leaving energy artillery in one of my star fleets and our other star fleets is all going to be all kinetic. And the reason for this is if we go ahead and look at the unbidden, I was trying to see what information I could glean off of these ships. And, um, well, it looks like this, uh, they have hull points around 8,000 hull points and around 30,000 shields. They don't have any armor. So that renders lasers kind of useless, right? The whole point of lasers is they deal massive extra bonus damage to armor, but they don't have any armor for us to cut through, so we're not going to build any ships with lasers on them. We're going to go all kinetic, pretty much. Um, all kinetic and missiles. So that's our new fleet design, is going to be kinetic energy. Um, I'm leaving uh, energy, energy battleships on one of our fleets because that fleet is going to stay and defend the L cluster, hopefully. Um, I did not waste all of our extra corvettes. I split off those corvettes from the fleet. You can see all these small fleets down here. I'm actually going to go ahead and merge them into one big corvette fleet um, so they can uh, we can leave them in the system and we won't replenish that fleet. We'll just let those corvettes die out. We'll get our, we'll get our value out of them. Um, with that being said, uh, some other changes I made is I decreased the amount of um, Art, minor artifacts that we need to build our ships because look how few minor artifacts we are I don't actually think alloys are going to become a bottleneck for us anymore as much as minor artifacts are So hopefully our ships should be much cheaper in terms of minor artifacts to build now um, I toned down on the pulse armor the ancient pulse armor is really good But it's just expensive in terms of minor artifacts if we had more than plus 13 we could maybe afford it, but um, For now we're only using it in a couple places where it really counts otherwise uh, we're, we're not really going to spend those minor artifacts, so hopefully we should be able to keep replenishing. Now, speaking of getting defenses, um, we are going to leave the Riven Starfleet, which is fully, uh, almost fully upgraded. We've got 14 of 15 cruisers, 16 of 16 destroyers, and 10 of 14 wanted battleships here. Um, we're going to leave this fleet uh, in the Lean Tigger system. And our other three fleets, let's see. Our other three fleets, we're going to move into the Martano system. No, no, the Raganoth system. This is where we are going to, uh, this is where we're going to, I guess, upgrade them and reinforce these fleets and get ready for an offensive against the Unbidden. Or maybe get ready for a defensive against the Unbidden. I'm not sure if we actually want to go after them or if we want to hold up and waltz them. Um, so certain things that I need to do. I need to make sure Waltham's upgrading to a Citadel. That's already happening. I need to make sure Raganoth is upgrading to a Citadel. This is going to allow us to build Titans. Um, and the last Citadel I need to make sure we have 
is in this system. So we're gonna upgrade this to a Star Fortress and then we're gonna promptly upgrade that to a Citadel right after. Um, okay, with all of that in mind, I think we can probably go ahead and unpause the game. Our fleets should all have their orders. And um, hopefully this will be enough to defend the L cluster, leaving one fleet. I'm really hoping, banking on the fact that this will be enough. There's no guarantee, but I think the more pressing threat is coming from the Unbidden. I don't know how powerful they are. Just like I thought. I was concerned about seeing one 400 and something power, thousand power fleet. They just brought in two more fleets of almost like 150, 180,000 power. Oh my gosh. Um, another thing we should probably do is go into edicts. Um, we should probably turn off research subsidies. We probably can take the hit to our research. But I'd like to take forge subsidies, okay? This is going to increase our alloy output, which is needed. And uh, then we can take some of these military bonuses. So focusing crystals gives us energy weapons damage. We can afford these, uh, these resources, so we should probably take them. Um, we should take volatile explosives. Volatile reactive armor for the extra armor hit points. Volatile ammunition for extra kinetic we weapon damage. Exotic acids for shield boosts. Exotic acids for fuel. Okay. Um, I was taking a look at my rare resources and we should be able to afford all of these policies. All of these edicts. Um, it's going to be expensive, but we're, not, we're just not using these rare resources as it is. So this will help our fleets to be more powerful and more resilient. Um... Okay, so um, as I'm sitting here talking, I should probably go ahead and prioritize um, prioritize reinforcing this fleet that's sitting here in this system. Um, once we get this fully upgraded, um, we can hopefully just leave it alone and let it sit here and defend for us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it to discourage allied fleets from following because we want our allied fleets to follow us in defense against the Unbidden, not to defend us in the L Cluster. Um, I think we can handle the L Cluster on our own now. Um, in Terminal Egress, I'm going to build a couple of shipyards. The reason being is uh, if we need to upgrade this fleet, uh, I'd like to have a close-by shipyard where we can do that um, without having to leave the L Cluster. All right. Construction complete. We will continue to sell uh, resources and buy in alloys as needed. Um, but for the time being, uh, we're just going to move our fleet down south. Let's see, what are the unbidden up to? Okay, looks like they have started their assault already. They already have one, two, three, four, five, six fleets. Oh my gosh. I really hope they do not come up north. We can't handle it if they do. This, this game might end in defeat. Um, I wouldn't be upset if it did. I, I mean, okay, I won't lie. I'll be a little bit upset if, if it ends in defeat. But I feel like we're, we're, we're giving this all, all we got. We're giving this our hardest shot. And um, we're, we're just going to do our best. I didn't know what to be prepared for. And I honestly didn't think it was going to be that strong. Okay. Um, this fleet, we need to continue. No shipyard available to build fleet. That means that all we have left to do is create the Titan. Okay. We can live with that. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and quickly give this the upgrade order. So it's going to go to Terminal Egress and Upgrade. And then hopefully we can move it right back to Lean Tikker. Death of a great leader. Our great official. Bani Jakana has passed away. A small commemoration will suffice. All right, we are going to keep our Corvette fleet here. I don't think we need to upgrade our Corvette fleet. That's a waste of alloys. We just want these Corvette fleets to be expendable. Um, so we're going to leave our Corvette fleet in there. Let's see, who is this official? This was our Tribune of Rights. We could probably get Council Agenda Speed, sure. Um, and where were they governing? Our Tribune of Rights. I think they were governing Ultan. Let's see if we can hire in a new governor. Clear blocker, leader experience gain, leader lifespan, stability. Oh, but crime. I don't think it's good to get plus two stability for plus 10 crime. That's horrible. Um, why don't we just go ahead and take leader lifespan? We'll take this 33 year old, young and lots of potential. 
Um, okay, fantastic. In terminal egress, we should have a shipyard in 75 days, which means in 75 days, we'll be able to go ahead and upgrade this fleet. And uh, we want to keep an eye on this too and upgrade this to a citadel as soon as possible. We are going to save our alloys, uh, upgrading these fleets down here. We're going to see what they do. If they come up north, then we're going to make it a lot more of a priority. But if they move into Fanfred, um, that's good news for us. That means that's buying us time where we can focus on this, this fleet down here first. All right, we've got shipyards here, so let's go ahead and upgrade. Let's see how quickly we can upgrade because we probably need to move back pretty quickly. Okay, now that we've given the upgrade order and we still have extra alloys to spare, we're going to go ahead and sell what we can. And then we're going to buy in a whole bunch more alloys. We're going to use these alloys. I think first things first is we want to upgrade all three fleets. This is going to swap out some of the designs. So we're going to change our cruisers all into torpedo class cruisers. We're going to change all of our battleships into kinetic battleships. And then we're going to start using our extra alloys left over to reinforce. Meanwhile, while we're upgrading, we should be building our stockpile of minor artifacts and alloys, uh, which is exactly what we want to do. Okay. Good news. Looks like they are moving into Fanfred, which means complete. They are going to attack the Alliance of Hardshell Harbor and not us. Okay, this is the Lean Tigger system. We need to go ahead and upgrade this to a Citadel as soon as possible. And once this is a Citadel, we need to build weapons in here as fast as possible. Okay, so this Starfleet is already up to 154k. That's a really, we're in really good shape here. How are these Starfleets doing with their upgrades? 96%, 97%. How is this doing with this upgrade? 56%. Upgraded. It's gonna take a little bit longer to upgrade because we can only do two upgrades at a time. That's fine. Our other upgrades are continuing. We have the alloys to afford it. So whichever ships are done upgrading, let's go ahead and click on this reinforce fleet. This is gonna cost us 127, no, 12,000 alloys. Okay. We're gonna spend 12,000 alloys to kit out the Cardana Starfleet. We can upgrade one of our commanders of the Riven Starfleet. This is guarding the L cluster. We're going to go ahead and give Guidance System Focus for extra explosive weapons damage. Construction complete. Okay, we're going to keep an eye on them. I know they've gone into the Alliance of Hardshell Harbor, but we want to make sure that they don't change their mind and decide to start going north. We're going to take this time. They bought us time by going east instead of north, but we still have to fight them eventually. I'd like to fight them on our Ships own terms. Upgrade. Like if we can fight them in Waltham, that would be perfect. We should probably build an ancient shield overcharger. This is going to increase our shield hardening and our shield hit points um, and Walton. If we can get them to fight us here, we're gonna have a huge advantage, but that's not a guarantee. It's not a given. All right, 89% upgraded. Come on, let's get to 100% quickly. I don't like waiting. We're sitting duck here. If the, um, if the Great Tempest decides to attack us now, we won't be ready. 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, and 100. Ships upgrade. Fully upgraded, great, move back. What are we researching in terms of technology? Focused arc emitters and fleet command limit. Okay, both of these are gonna be really good for us. Once we get focused arc emitters, we can upgrade all of our battleships. Once we get extra fleet command limit, we can build more battleships or more, um, Cruisers, not sure yet. Um, let's see what agenda we want to get next. We could get Unity. Wait, we don't need Unity anymore. Let's get Stability. Stability's really good. Okay, this fleet is moving back. We've got it up to 142,000. Okay, I think the Torpedo class cruisers are going to do really well against the um, 
against the Great Tempest because they deal extra damage against large ships and the Great Tempest is pretty much battleships and cruisers, I think. Democratic ruler election looks like our commissary general is just going to be re-elected. Okay, nothing surprising there. Um, we can sell 10,000 food. We can sell 5,000 minerals. We can sell a whole bunch of consumer goods. Hopefully that means we can buy more alloys. We're going to use those alloys to reinforce the Cardana star fleet. I think I want to get one fleet fully upgraded before alien megastructure, before we start up, I, instead of evenly upgrading all of the fleets, I think I want one fully upgraded fleet. The Velutarian technocracy have taken on the challenge of building a science nexus, a research institute so technically advanced that it could revolutionize the scientific process completely. That's super cool. The Ul the Ulrikai system is bustling with activity of, as engineers assembling the build site. Regardless of whether they fail or succeed, this alone has earned them a place among the great forerunners of our time. That's really cool. We, we're supportive of them. Go them. I think, just like I predicted, minor artifacts are going to be our limit. Or maybe not. Can we build titans here now? Starbase needs Titan Assembly Yards building. Titan Assembly Yards. Let's go ahead and build Titan Assembly Yards here. This is exciting. Um, so we're going to go ahead and spend our alloys here, and then we're going to spend our next alloys probably in the Decini Starfleet. All right. Waltham. So what does a fully upgraded Citadel look like? 67,000. We have torpedo batteries, we have gun batteries, and we have hangar bays. Yep, this is looking pretty good. 67,000 and that's with no defense platforms. If we finally get some extra alloys to spend, which is a big if, we will start building defense platforms there. Spaceborne life form encountered. Okay, what's going on with the unbidden? Nothing good, nothing good. I'm concerned that as they get bigger, they're only gonna get stronger. So maybe we should be more preemptive, but I don't think we have what it takes to fight all of those fleets. Not with our measly three fleets, and only one of them is over 100k. They have like six fleets all over like 150k. <sighs> all right. This is certainly disconcerting. We can probably hire on a new commander for our Corvette fleet. Let's see what our options are. We don't have any great options. Why don't we just take this level four person and why don't we upgrade them and give them unyielding. Ship hull points plus 15%, not that big of a deal for Corvettes. Engineer two is probably better. Skirmisher, this are all council traits when they're not on the council. We'll just go ahead and give them the Admiral focus. All right. All right, now we can continue frantically selling everything we can get our hands on and buying more alloys, which are currently really expensive, 23,000. Maybe we'll wait, wait for the price to drop a bit. The Martano Starfleet has no commander? When did this happen? I guess we need to hire on yet another commander. Again, I didn't really like our options. I guess we could just take this 38 year old, pretty average. We could probably take Resilience, have them live longer. Resilience level two, give him Admiral trait. Okay, none of those traits are very good. That's a very lackluster commander. Okay, once the Raganov finishes the Titan assembly yards, we will be laughing. Construction complete. All right, Decini Starfleet, continue upgrading. Okay. Here we go. Con our reinforcements hostile continue to roll in, and we have a hostile fleet engaged. Is this here in the Lean Tigger system? All right. Let's see how our new fully upgraded fleet works out for us. We have all of our Corvettes 
plus one fully upgraded fleet. So it's not going to be as strong as when we have all four fleets fighting them, plus mining our allies. But lost. They're destroying our mining station. That's rude. I mean, we seem to be doing pretty well. We're not taking too many casualties. Let's see. I say we're not taking too many casualties. We lost two battleships and three cruisers. That's a lot. But we destroyed all five of them. That's also a lot. So we're taking heavier hits, but we're also dealing, dishing back as much as they're dealing to us. Okay. Um, so this Starfleet should be a priority to continue reinforcing at all times. This Starfleet, we want to make sure we keep reinforced because if we lose security at the Elgate cluster, then we're going to have... Um, enemies pouring in from multiple directions. Okay, I can probably turn it off of slow mode. Back onto fast. Wait for the price of allies to drop a little bit so we can buy some more. Mercenary Enclave destroyed. Word has reached us that a Mercenary Enclave has been destroyed by the Unbidden. The aggression has proved too strong for the Azure services to face down on their own, and the station housing the board, barracks, and the shipyards was destroyed. Uh oh, this Hostile does not bode well for detected. us. Hostile fleet detected again. Alright, round two. Okay, hopefully we can destroy all of their fleet again. Wiping that fleet was pretty good. Let's see. Three of five interdictors and one mothership lost. Okay, pretty good. We actually didn't take too high casualties that time. Okay, repair, repair. And uh, this fleet, in fact, needs to reinforce. Though we don't really have any alloys to spend on reinforcing. We're lacking 193 alloys to do this. Hostile fleet detected. Okay, we need to move our corvettes in as well. For some reason, they're not getting activated straight away. Wow, they are relentless. This is why we needed to leave a fleet behind to defend the L cluster. There's a lot of them, and they just keep coming. Okay, how is this? Are we continuing to lose battleships? We are, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Well... We'll continue doing our best to re reinforce this fleet. I think they come in waves, and I feel like that... Hopefully this wave is done. That'll give us a chance to just, like, reinforce the fleet and let them sit. And spend our alloys in other places, more important places. Oh my gosh, alloys are at an all-time low price. Death of a great leader. Our commander has passed away. The age of 111. Alright, keep it traditional. This Council is our way. Okay. That was our Minister of Defense, so we need to appoint a new Minister of Defense to see what our options are. Sublight speed plus 5%, sublight speed plus 10%, and ship's weapons damage plus 2%. I like this. Um, so we need to find what fleet that person was commanding. So that must have been our Army General then? It was. Okay, we need a new Army General. Let's go ahead and get somebody in, let's see, army damage plus 10%, sure. We'll go ahead and take that, we'll take butcher level 2, and we can take eye for talent in case he gets on the council. Alright, fantastic. We're going to spend our alloys t to reinforce this fleet. And of course, all this time I've been spending alloys to reinforce this fleet is time I have not been spending alloys to reinforce our fleets down here, which is maybe more pressing and urgent, but I mean, it's really just do I want enemies pouring in from here? This is more immediate danger, right? Down here, they're not actually attacking us. They've, they're taking out the Alliance of Hardshell Harbor, which is a regrettable... It's a incredible state of affairs, but it is what it is. It's better them than us. It's better them than us. 
Let's go ahead and sell off some rare resources that we don't need. Make sure we're still in the positive after taking all this. We still are in the positive, so we can sell off a whole bunch of these. We don't need to keep them stockpiled for any reason. With all of this, we can buy dirt cheap alloys. Okay, and with this, we can go ahead and reinforce the fleet. Oh, minor artifacts are being a, a reason why we can't keep reinforcing our fleets as quickly as I would like to. We've hit a roadblock and it's minor artifacts. What we might end up doing if this becomes an issue in future episodes is having some fleets that don't use any Archeo tech. Guardians of the Galaxy, the emergence of a threat on the galactic level has not gone unnoticed even among the, no the normally aloof Elder Empires. Despite having taken little interest in galactic affairs previously, news of this horror prompted a flurry of activity from the Andari. At first, it was just a few scouting vessels, perhaps sent to verify the graveness of the situation, but, the soon but then the reports began to came in of Andari warfleets mustering on their borders, readying for the defenses for an oncoming storm. Now the Andarian regulators have fully emerged from their self-imposed isolation to taking a leading role in the defense of the whole galaxy. They have proclaimed themselves the leaders of a galactic defense league and extended an invite to all the lesser species to put aside their, their feuds and join them in repelling this menace for the sake of all sapient -like life in the galaxy. Will they be able to save us? Alright. Seems like a lot of notifications just came up. Wow. All of this at once. Let's see. Altered nutrition. There has been a widespread change in the nutritional value of food across the galaxy. Everything is more nutritious now. That or we may require less nourishment. Either way, this change is unexpected. The Andarian regulators' experiments have again changed the laws of the universe. We should assume they are up to something that is extremely dangerous and prepare accordingly. Okay, they're messing with the laws of the universe and food is now more nutritious. That doesn't seem like a bad thing. But, um... I guess there could be consequences. Mass shift. Recent grav uh, gravimetric scans are conflicting with previously recorded data. After running the numbers multiple times, it is undeniable that something is affecting the whole galaxy. Changes at the most miniature possible scale are affecting the most massive celestial bodies. This is of little consequence for most planets, but some might experience gravitational related anomalies. What's going on? Constant rounding. This should be impossible, but a mathematical law has changed. A fundamental constant used to calculate the radius of circles has been rounded down. Like pi? Pi is now just 3? <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? The implications are staggering, jeopardizing our entire mathematical system and everything built upon it. There's evidence that the change is self-correcting already, albeit slowly. For now, we've got textbooks to update. This is horrible. It's giving us ship build speed and megastructure build speed bonus, but it's extremely going to hamper our ability to research new things. I don't like that. Blackout. All at once, every star in the universe went dark. What? While at most physical, while most physical effects of solar radiation are still present, a shift in the wavelength of starlight made it imperceptible to every living creature. The situation is improving very uncomfortable, and there are signs that the wavelengths will slowly return to their original frequencies. Okay, this is increasing our cloaking strength, but reducing our sensor range. That's really bad. Shroud tears. Across the galaxy, hundreds of subspace ruptures briefly opened to a psionic dimension, and it appears to have weakened whatever barrier existed between the two. While most cause no issue, a few release energy beings now terrorizing the galaxy. Thankfully, these beings seem as confused as we are, and there doesn't appear to be any organized cohesion, so we are ruling out an invasion at this point. We will have to deal with the entities in our territory. Alright, so now they're messing with the shroud as well. What is going on? Spaceborn okay, so this is the Andarian. The Andarian regulators. They are fanatic materialists. And uh, I think this probably triggered because the Unbidden got too close to them. Interesting. So they're messing with everything and they're going to lead the defense against the Unbidden. I welcome this. Yes, please. Please help us. We need all the help. Okay. Um, 
It says that we could federate with them. Requires the federation diplomacy tradition. Requires excellent relations or 30 trust. How do I get trust? How do I federate with them? Okay. I don't know, but I would like to federate with them because they are right next to us and they can be really valuable defenders. I don't know if we can defend ourselves from the unbidden, but they can certainly defend us. Okay. How is this fleet doing? It's in okay shape. It's not in great shape. We really need more minor artifacts. All right. Um, this governor can probably get... A bonus to leader lifespan. Fleet combat. And terminal egress. What is this? Corrupted avatar psionic entity. Oh, is this the things coming from the shroud? Okay, that's good to know. So we have one there. Do we have any in our borders? We have one here, but it looks like the state of Mythfell is going to deal with it. Come on, state of Mythfell. Please. Okay. I Hopefully, I think they're going to deal with it. Um, those are the only two in our borders. All right. I think we're going to have to move our fleet down to deal with it then. To terminal egress, we go. Our poor science ship and construction ship are going to get destroyed. And our star base. I don't know if our star base is cut out to, to deal with this. Spaceborne life form encountered. Okay, fantastic. Looks like we are just short on minor artifacts, but everything else we actually have plenty of. We have plenty of alloys. Isn't this nice? This is really nice for a change. We can uh, get a Titan if we save up 55 more minor artifacts. I think we will. Galactic Custodian appointed. The Galactic Senate has voted to bestow emergency custodianship powers upon the Darhesh Citizen Alliance. In a ceremony broadcast across the galaxy, they were appointed the official custodians of the galactic community. At first, as, as the first among equals, the Darhesh... Uh, Variatus government is now charged with safeguarding the galactic the galactic community from all potential threats. All right, so they're gonna try to lead the galactic community, and the Andarian regulators have declared that they're gonna try to help the galactic community. I wonder if there's gonna arise some kind of tension there. Where is the Darhesh Alliance? Here they are. Okay, interesting. We're kind of caught in between them, and I'd rather side with the Fallen Empire. They seem promising. All right, did we defeat the psionic uh, entity? I think we did. Fleet is already at full strength. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and uh, we're already fully repaired as well. All right. Um, we actually don't need the extra alloys. We're not hurting for alloys right now. We're just hurting for um, minor artifacts. Open council position. We need a new head of research. When did our head of research die? We can take research speed for statecraft. Or we can just take research speed in general. Let's take research speed in general. Um, did one of our science worlds lose a governor? Fortalia? Yes. Okay, why don't we assign our one of our science ship uh, one of our science ship scientists? Yes. You can govern this world now. Okay, how are we doing on minor artifacts? We've got only 99. It's not quite enough. 14 more. All right, we can build a Titan, guys. I think we're already building another Titan for this fleet as well. All right, I'm so excited to see what these Titans look like. Yep, we're building two titans. They sure do take a long time to build. They take years to build. I guess that makes sense. That checks out. Commissary General. 
Um, he is ruling from Favaria. Okay, well, since he's a ruler, let's give him military ship build speed. Yes. All right, Andarian regulators, what are you doing to combat the unbidden? Can we form a federation? I would like so. I would like to, please. Apparently not. Fleet is already at full strength. Click to reinforce at the nearest shipyards. This is going to cost us... I think we're just short on minor artifacts. Yeah, we only have 54, so we can't do much. We might as well just get started, though. Every little bit helps. Okay, so did that ship build speed improve our titans? I guess a little bit. Um, looks like the uh, Indaran regulators are pushing him back here. Maybe we could push south and deal with it as well. We have 128, 154, and 94. Not bad. Not bad. Not great either. We're going to go ahead and reinforce this as well. Get all these destroyers and uh, cruisers up and going. Minor artifacts, please, please, please. We need more. Okay. This is the governor of New Favaria. Let's go ahead and give analyst for some governor bonuses. The Yamathur Star Station. Why are we building ships from this far away? Oh, it looks like there's some shroud entities in this system that we need to deal with. Okay, why don't we send our MSI warship to go deal with it? Is 19,000 going to be enough? Let's hope so. We can temporarily reassign one of our commanders. Let's assign our lord. No, let's assign someone more expendable so we won't be sad if we lose them. Yeah, let's assign this guy. Are the debt collectors going to still come in light of the current situation with the unbidden? I would hope that they would have more important things to do than collect debts from us. Or fake debts. They're not even real debts. Alright, reinforce fleet for 86 minor artifacts, 4,617 alloys. Yes. No shipyard available hostile to build fleet. fleet. Where's the hostile fleet? Okay, here it is. All right, let's go MSI Warship. You versus the Psionic Avatar, who wins? Are we even doing anything against it? A little bit. Okay, so it's targeting our shield and it looks like we're just dealing direct damage through their shield. Curious, what weapons are actually on our on our ship. We have kinetic artillery and a bunch of uh, strike craft. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna win this no problem. Lots of strike craft here. It's actually not bad having all this strike craft. All right, we can go ahead and head back to Fevnor and repair. We can sell a whole bunch of these. We can buy in some more alloys. Okay, now what reinforcing can I do? We need to take um, our, our commander back from the recovered asset. Okay, no shipyard available to build fleet. Fleet is already at full strength. I think maybe we can only build two titans at a time. That's fine. We'll go ahead and continue spending our resources on the Martano Starfleet. Okay, I wonder what the 
Unbidden is going to do. Wow, they have really pushed them back. We should seize this opportunity. We should. Let's let's push forward while they're in a weakened state. All right, and we finished researching focused arc emitters. Okay, before we push forward, we got to put focused arc emitters onto our ships. We should also research gamma lasers or jump drives. I prefer gamma lasers. Um, okay. Let's go to our situation log and let's see what it says about the unbidden. I, okay. A massive tear in the fabric of space has appeared in our galaxy, acting as some sort of one-way conduit between our reality and another. Strange ethereal spacecraft are pouring in through this dimensional portal and they seem to be leaching energy to lethal effect from those unfortunate enough to be caught in their path. Dimensional anchors active five. Unkill, unbidden killed by us and building, unbidden killed by others. Harvested vessels, harvested worlds. Okay, dimensional anchors. The invaders are building some kind of large space stations that act as anchors, conduits that increase the ability to move ships through the wormhole. The more of these anchors they bring online, the more often they will be able to bring in reinforcements from their own realm. These anchors also appear to significantly strengthen the subspace integrity of the dimensional portal. The portal will be effectively invulnerable to weapons as long as there are any active anchors. Okay, so we can't attack the portal until we get rid of these anchors. Let's track these on a map and let's see where these anchors are. There's an anchor in, in Fevnor? Really? I don't see an anchor here. The portal from which they will be able to continuously reinforce the numbers until it can be destroyed. Okay, so apparently there's an anchor in Fevnor. I don't know about that. But there's an anchor in Dandar? What do these anchors look like? I'm so confused. Maybe the anchors are inside their border? Okay, all we know is we should definitely not go into the Depray system. Oh, right, we need to, we want to upgrade to focused our committers for all of our fleets. Well, we can. Let's go ahead and upgrade these guys to focused our committers. Spaceborne life form encountered. Spaceborn life form encountered. All right, Tribune of Rights governing Desadia. We can go ahead and give them industrialist. Spaceborn life form encountered. All right, so we've got a citadel here. We should probably get a citadel here as well. We should probably get a citadel at all of our borders places. So Sysmok included. Should probably get a citadel here and here. Should probably also get a citadel at Dorellis. I know we're spending a lot of alloys, but right now it's minor artifacts that are causing Space us to be slow, not encounter. the alloys. So we can afford to spend those alloys. Cloaking fleets discovered. Interesting. Who are they? Who do they belong to? The Palisade Devils. Incoming transmission. Welcome. Palisade Devils offers state-of-the-art security services. Okay, no, they're like mercenaries. Spaceborn life form encounters. Okay. How are we doing with our upgrades? Our Titan is almost done. Oh, this is so exciting. Thirty more days. I think that Titan though is going to this fleet first. Where's our Riven Star fleet? They went into the Corolla system, huh? Ships upgraded. I suppose that's fine. Well once these guys are done upgrading we need to move them back. Quickly. 98, 99, 100. Alright. Back you go. They're at 163,000 now. 
Great. Their um, Titan will arrive. 2447. So in about a year. Alright, can we do any reinforcements? We can. Let's ships go ahead and upgraded. do it. Alright, all of these ships have been upgraded. Except for these three ships for some reason. How are we in a negative energy deficit? How did this happen? Oh, this is not good. I knew we should be watching energy. Okay. We don't have enough excess food to really be thinking about this. The only thing I have a ton of are um, consumer goods. I think we need to start building some generator districts. Especially in our factory worlds. Like this? Why don't we replace some of these with um, energy districts? We don't need them all to be factories. We clearly have enough factories to keep us going. But I also don't know when, when did that happen? When did we start to be in the negative? Is it those focused R committers? Are those costing us a pretty penny to upkeep? All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade these ships. Ships upgraded. All right, how are we doing on our last Titan? 14 days. All right. We should have a Titan now. I think this is it. This is. That is one big ship. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's move our fleet to meet the unbidden. The Andarian regulators are doing everything for us. They don't even need us. We should just stay in Regunoth. Are they just going to beat the endgame crisis for us? That's no fun. That's really no fun. Okay, I don't even see any unbidden left. They have like two systems left over here, but the Andarian regulators, I'm sure, are going to take care of it. They're really good at taking care of it. Incoming transmission. Migration treaty? No. But you should go ahead and build some construction ships. The unbidden has a construction ship here. Really? Okay, so the Unbidden has random territory over here as well. Like, where did this come from? Was that one of their anchors? Do they have any territory anywhere else we need to be aware of? Refugees? Ultra Valdar refugees seeking fleeing from the state of Holdabana have arrived, have arrived on Laval Corps. Ultra Valdar. Interesting. I think we should probably, yeah, welcome them in. They're Valdar Council after all. Agenda ready. Okay, Council Agenda ready. We can take Stability plus 20, and I think we should end the episode here. We have made good progress. Not sure what to expect now. The, the Unbidden have been beaten back no, with no help from us. Um, it was the Andarian Archivists. Are the Unbidden coming back? We didn't destroy those anchors. I don't know where those anchors are. Um, I guess we'll have to see how this plays out in the next episode. This can't be the end of it. I'm sure they have more to show. If that was the end of it, then that was extremely anticlimactic and I'm a little bit upset at this game. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.